The next speaker is Professor Jin Young Lee from Stanford University. The topic she's going to discuss is creating a brain digital twin. Please welcome her with a big round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. I've never been to a copyright conference before. I learned a lot, and I'm really enjoying this conference. Today, the topic I'm going to discuss is about my business. You've just heard what it will take to create different digital content, and you heard about digital twin. In my business, we are creating digital twin of the brain. As I said earlier, I've never been to a copyright conference before, but about two weeks ago, I went to a gathering where people discuss how, what impact AI will have in our society. In healthcare, AI has become very influential, and these gatherings show that AI has brought a lot of game-changing cases. We are envisioning the future in this conference, specifically future brought by AI. And I personally thought AI is a capable and it will be more powerful. And in many areas, we are advancing and developing technologies. Technologists are technologists. And it is a human's choice when it comes to how to use the technologies. And humans are required to make a choice when developing technologies. So our choice will matter. You can see this from a movie. There is a difference between a good a protagonist and a villain. What says them apart, what sets a good person from a villain is the choice he makes. Not only in, in the era of a digital, but in the era of AI, things are changing fast. And we are living in this game-changing era. And people are thinking about how to become a rich dad. And it is very important to have the right world view when making a decision. The number one world view is to become beneficial to the humanity. So I'm talking about AI in this copyright conference. And I'd like to say we have to develop a technology that is beneficial to human beings. I'm an electrical engineer. And computational power has been developed by the domain of electric engineer. My grandmother had a stroke, and he suffered for quite long. And that made me a change. That made me change my career path. As Professor Hyun Shil An said, he actually told us about game changes. There is no breakthrough in treatment to brain diseases and conditions. Actually, we are living in an era where there is no cure to brain diseases. There is no right way in learning. I think the same theory can be applied to brain condition research. If you want to pick a fruit, you have to create a machine that can help you reach fruits hanging high to change the landscape of brain condition. There have many attempts. And I received support from the Ministry of Health in the US. My lab is located in Stanford. And this is the building where my lab is located. You can see it on the left-hand side. And neuroscience is also home to one of our labs. 
my work borders around different domains. So I'm belonging to four different departments. So I have many bosses. This is the building where my lab is located. To facilitate my research, I wanted to have this machine, and it took 10 years for me to have this. And I have been working on my research with the help of this machine. Let me briefly tell you my research has the title of my presentation says, we are creating digital twin of the brain. All brain conditions, all types of brain conditions are increasing fast. Yes, AI has changed a lot of things, but once you are diagnosed with a brain condition, there is nothing you can do. And brain diseases are growing fast, and neurodegenerative diseases such as dementia are growing fast, and neurodevelopmental diseases that are diseases witnesses at an early development phase are increasing fast, and infectious diseases are growing fast as well. Once you are diagnosed with a brain condition, everything is done. You cannot picture a brighter future for you. There is nothing you can do even with the help of AI. You will lose your memory as well. The number of patients with brain diseases is increasing and reaching one billion around the world, and it costs one trillion dollars in the U.S. alone. This is not about treatment. This is about cure. So brain diseases will disable you. The healthcare costs are supported by the government. Actually governments around the world. So it's not a problem that should be dealt at the corporate level or individual level. So many governments around the world made a huge investment. I'm not saying those investments are not effective. What I'm saying is despite those investments, we are not seeing a game change in this domain. As I showed you the curve, the curve is going up sharply. There are no technologies in place for now that can have an impact on the curve. So the pharmaceutical industry has made huge investments in creating medicine. It takes about more than one trillion to develop a new drug. But those new drugs failed in last year and this year, two different drugs were approved by the FDA, that doesn't mean that they will be effective to cure of brain diseases. And those drugs and medicine will be used to get rid of bulk of proteins in your brain. So the uh, so patients at the early age of brain diseases were gathered to be tested for this new drug, but there are also counter effects of this new, this new drug. So that should be what we have to be careful about. And digital therapy is about changing your lifestyle or habits. Having a disease in your brain is a serious problem. There is a almost no possibility that digital therapy will give new hope. In electroceutical is a, an approach where you can directly stimulate brain circuits. And this was created, created by Elon Musk. So you put electro, electrical nose into your brain. 
and this method can be applied to patients with Parkinson's disease or epilepsy. Once it is effective, those patients can stop shaking. But the current approach doesn't offer clear answers. They are just trying this method. But the problem here is that people don't understand why this doesn't work and what they should change in the design. It's the same as just hitting a broken machine. And critical trial of this approach will take $500 million. And no one can say for sure that this will be effective for patients with brain diseases. So there is no cure to brain conditions. I think it is because our goal was not set right. What do we need to restore brain function? You have been thinking about copyright only throughout the day. So your brain function has it deteriorated, I guess. You have to measure your brain function to restore your brain function. So, so this is a scale. To control your weight, you have to measure your weight, and you have to put on the scale to measure your weight. So this is the only way to measure your brain function. So this is a survey or questionnaire. There are check boxes. Let's say your digital device is broken. And it's like you are communicating with a broken digital device to fix it. So to change the game, what do we need? My idea was digital twin. Digital twin in a general term is different from digital twin in the brain disease domain. To create a digital twin of this space, you have to know everything about this place. But we don't know how the brain works. So digital twin that I'm referring to here is to identify and find out how the brain works. So I have to create something. It's not creating something from the scratch. It's about measuring what is happening in the brain. And based on that, I can create a, a create digital twin of the brain. And they will tell us how the brain works and help us diagnose brain diseases more easily. That's what I studied for more than 15 years. I have my I spent my career solely on this research area. So I've studied how the brain circuit works, and I succeeded. I successfully developed this approach, and I created a digital twin of the brain. So I, my lab can replicate the brain, which I call digital twin of the brain. In your brain, there are billions of neurons in you. It takes several months to measure what is happening between the neurons. And it is more difficult to do this on human brain than doing it on lab animals. So we can do this experiment 
digitally. I'm not saying we can deal with all the possible scenarios, but at least we can make replication of the brain. They will tell us which therapeutic method should be used to predict which brain diseases. The next step was to find out how proteins in your brain move around in your brain. And this can be an area where AI can be used. We created an experiment and we did data processing. And based on the data, data processing, we came up with a theory to identify how protein is moving around in the brain. And we developed modeling and protein balls were measured like this. And protein decreased where brain activity increases and vice versa. And this was new discovery. And this new technology helped us find that out. So with this technology, we can replicate a specific function of the brain, and that will help us predict how that area of the brain works. And that will let us use certain treatment to that specific area. Furthermore, let's say there is a leftover of a protein in your brain that you don't want to have. And we can also figure out the relationship between the leftover and other neurons. And genetic expression can be also understood by this technology. The reason we developed this technology is we didn't want to be helpless when it comes to brain diseases. We want to control brain diseases and conditions. That's the motivation for me to develop this technology, to use this for patients. It takes more than writing a thesis. That is why I founded ELBIS. It stands for Live Visualization of a Brain Circus. Elvis created a solution called Neuromatch. It is a platform to create It is about understanding communication within your brain. And the ultimate goal here is to stay healthy, to help make your brain stay healthy. I had an interview of a job seeker, and I asked him if he knows what my company is doing. And the, the interviewee said he understands my company is creating GPS within the brain. So it's not that we don't understand what is going on in our brain anymore. We are, tra we are trying to navigate through our brain. So AI is basically used, but that's not the primary technology. AI will help us move from manual process to automatic process. And basically, it provides network. Uh, basically, it is us. And neural match we develop that provides necessary information. So as I said, there's no cure for brain diseases, but brain diseases are increasing exponentially, and it takes more than, you have to wait more than a year to see a doctor and be diagnosed with your brain disease. So to 
tackle this to help people have easier access to diagnosis tool. We created this web-based tool. Let's say there is a patient in a remote area. This patient can have access to this web-based tool and can make informed decisions. So information in your brain can be networked and used for digital twin for your brain over your brain. We can create and develop a new treatment approach. That's the design of Neuromatch. Stanford has a startup accelerator programs and Elvis was supported by the startup programs about five years ago, we thought we may be able to use this approach for patients. So this has been a long journey. Now we have a patient data. And this is a screenshot of Neuromatch. And it shows which area went wrong. And this will help doctors diagnose the disease more easily. And it also offers information and data that were not available before. And we heard about game change of AI. Without a game change, the we cannot uh, imagine a brighter future. So by using the digital twin technology, uh, we can tackle these problems. And my company is trying to contribute to tackling those issues. And we are working on epilepsy, Alzheimer's, sleeping disorder, on Parkinson's disease and autism. Starting the starting at the end of this year, we will apply our tests, and we have this plan for each year. When iPhones were not available. It's difficult to collect information and compile them. But my platform, I'm sure, will help that to be processed much easier. So this is a copyright conference. My topic is a healthcare domain. The copyright is highly regulated. And the, my domain of healthcare is also highly regulated. And AI and content in the medical domain. It's first, the regulations in this domain are very strict. Once again, my company, Elvis, is located in Palo Alto. And we have a branch office in Daegu. And there is another branch office that has developed therapies. So Elvis' primary goal is to change the pessimistic future of brain diseases. And we are targeting to process data fast. Because that will be very important survive to survival of the humanity. Seven percent of the global GDP will be spent on managing Alzheimer. We are still spending so much money, but the output is not good enough. 
and these technologies can be used by healthcare providers and the costs will be paid by insurance companies and these technologies can help save money and we heard a lot of models managing data So we don't have enough data to manage brain diseases. There is no organized system. So there is so many things that we don't know. So neural match our technology will enable us to create a future where individuals can be more active at staying healthy. Even at clinics and private hospitals, brain information will be shared and used. Doctors and nurses and technologists and technicians have meetings to share more data and information, and this technology will be conducive to facilitating the meetings, and this will help strategize their visions, and this will also be helpful to administration. It will also be helpful to save money at insurance companies. So how should we use a digital twin to tackle of brain diseases facing the humanity. I said I prefer to create a machine of a picking apples. Once you understand how your brain works, you will be able to understand how AI can be helpful. AI sounds attractive because it helps us do what is not possible before. Extensive computing resources are used for AI computing. With that resource available to my brain, I think I can do more. Human intelligence is designed to minimize energy consumption. I think general AI will not be realized. We have used computing resources to believe that we will be able to treat brain conditions and diseases. Now we are trying to understand the algorithm used to make the brain work. I think someday we can create an AI that is more accessible to the humanity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for introducing the new innovative technology. Once again, please give Professor Jin Young Lee a big round of applause.